Hello and welcome to another standard game to video. I'm a bit under the weather, but I just had to bring you this Just Sky combo deck, which has quickly turned into one of my favorite decks in standard. The initial concept of the deck was brought to my attention by one of my supporters on Patreon, and then I made a few tweaks, cut it down to three colors, and ended up with this Just Sky Legends combo. So how does the combo actually work? Well, the eventual goal is to make a whole bunch of Thopter tokens with PNLR to swarm the opponent and to win the game on the spot. Now there's a few pieces we need to set that up. First off, ideally we have a Relic of Legends, which helps us make a lot of mana since we can tap all our legendary creatures for mana, even in the same turn we played them. So there's no summoning sickness when it comes to using Relic to tap our legendaries for mana, which is awesome. It can also just lead to some very explosive starts where we can quickly dump out our hand and then we also will need a copy of the Tormented Prophet, saying if we would draw a card, exile the top two cards of our library instead, we may play those cards this turn. So the Prophet alongside Pia is one way we can generate a whole bunch of Thopter tokens, because whenever we play a land from exile or cast a spell from exile, we get to make a 1-1 Thopter, and with Pia they also have haste. So Pia plus Prophet is how we make Thopter tokens, but we also need to enable the Prophet in the first place by drawing cards, and that's where Rona and Unctus come into play. Rona especially helpful in the early game, as a 2-drop that can tap to draw a card and then discard a card, so it can help dig towards the missing combo pieces, maybe discard some legendaries that we already have in play, and then whenever we cast a legendary we can untap Rona to use it once again, so it can quickly churn through the deck. And then Rona is also very helpful in the late game, once we have our Relic of Legends in play, we can tap Rona for mana instead of using its ability, and then now if we cast a legendary we can untap Rona once again, so we can essentially get a 1 mana discount on all our spells for each Rona that we have in play. I say each Rona, because it is possible to have more than one in play at the same time, thanks to the mirror box. This cancels out the legend rule, so we can have multiple legendaries in play at the same time, each of them gets plus 1 plus 1, and each non-token creature we control also gets an additional plus 1 plus one for each author creature we control with the same name, so that also rewards us for having the same creature in play. So that's how we end up with multiple Ronas, making a lot of mana alongside Relic of Legends, and then it's just a matter of exiling a whole bunch of cards using Rona's ability, or using Unctus, which says whenever another blue creature we control becomes tapped, we get to draw a card and then discard a card. So that's another way of quickly churning through the deck, especially alongside Rona tapping for mana or using its ability to draw and discard, and then of course multiple copies of Unctus with a mirror box also gets out of hand pretty quickly. Now luckily we're not going to end up decking, because we exile cards from the top of our deck with a Prophet instead of drawing them, so even if we have an empty library and we would trigger Unctus forcing us to draw cards, which is not optional, we still don't lose the game since the cards would get exiled, and we're not technically drawing from an empty library, so that's also pretty important. And then it's pretty easy to just cast a whole bunch of spells from exile, especially with multiple copies of Pia, we get to make more than one Thopter token for each spell or land we play from exile, so that will quickly assemble that lethal army of Thopters to end the game. The Thopters also get pumped by Unctus, which bumps up all our artifact creatures, so that can also speed things up a little bit. And then going through the rest of our deck, we also have the full set of Chaos Reconstruction, which is also very important in assembling all these different pieces, because we do need multiple cards in play for the combo to go off, and Reconstruction, if we cast it for usually X equals 4 or 5 is the sweet spot, we can put a lot of them in play at the same time. And then it's especially nice if we hit something like a Mirror Box alongside a few of the same Legendary, so we can immediately keep them in play without needing to sacrifice them to the Legendary rule. And then it's usually go time once we cast a big reconstruction, we'll often have enough legendaries in play to start comboing off. And then this is also an excellent mana sync if we generate enough mana early on with a Relic of Legends, so these two also pair very nicely. And then to round out the deck, we do need some cheap legendaries. Skrelv, also very useful in protecting some of our key combo pieces, and with the Relic of Legends it's essentially free to play it, since it can immediately tap for mana. Then we already mentioned Rona, which we can also transform into the Obliterator as another mana sync. can even make black mana with Relic of Legends, so we don't need to pay any life. Reality Chip, another blue artifact creature that's legendary, so it takes a lot of boxes, can make mana with our Relic of Legends, it's an artifact that gets pumped by Unctus, and then with Relic we can tap our Reality Chip for mana, and then Unctus will also let us draw and discard, and then we can also reconfigure it to start playing off the top, so it also provides a nice mana sink. And then a Sten often names either Artifact or Sorcery in this deck, so we can quickly empty out our hand or cast a bigger Chaos Reconstruction. can also potentially flicker it to save it from a Sweeper, or maybe chum block a larger creature and then still flicker it so we don't take any damage. 
And then at 3 mana I also have one copy of the Purity Overseer, which can make a 3-3 Golem token, and it's also possible for our deck to generate multiple artifacts in the same turn, so we get an additional Golem token, which can also help out, and then also has good synergy with our Unctus, which will pump all our artifact creatures, and the ability can also be granted to some of our non-blue creatures, so those can also turn into looting effects. And then our mana base has a few goodies, Plaza of Heroes, not only important to fix our mana, but can also make our creatures indestructible or give hexproof until end of turn. And then the channel lands can also be discounted down to one mana, Crucible making tokens, Soaring City to bounce opposing cards, and then Igunjo to deal 4 damage can also potentially catch the opponent off guard since we might appear to be tapped out, but with a Relic of Legends our creatures can still tap for mana during the opponent's turn. And then quite a few dual lands and a few basics to search up just in case. So that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the draw with a keepable hand. Skralf plus Sten, and triple Relic of Legends, a bit overkill, would prefer more lands or creatures. So Sten could name Artifact or could name Sorcery. With this hand it might be Artifact, in case we don't find our third land, can still play it. And then quickly deploy the additional copies to set up a big reconstruction, which is our goal. It's gonna be a Soul Partition. To make our scroll more expensive. Okay, so Sten still naming Artifact here. It's also going to help with uh, Skrelv. And hope this doesn't get exiled. At least we've got our third land for Relic now. Soul Partition does point towards a more controlling white deck. And the Sweepers can be quite effective against our deck. It's going to be a Restoration of Iganjo helping them ramp. Okay. So I can decide between Relic times 2. Profit will be nice as well. So do we want a double Relic? Relic plus Skrelf. I guess we can still play a Relic afterwards. Sure. Okay, so Stun putting in some work here. And then I don't think we're ready for reconstruction yet next turn, but we'll see. Could already cast one for x equals 4, which is pretty decent. Just want to wait and see if we want to play around a sweeper. And maybe hold it to recover from it. It's going to be a depopulate to wipe the board. At least we got to draw cards, so that's nice. Okay, so get back on the board with a relic plus profit. Is there a way to keep Plaza untapped with the activation? Don't think so. Maybe keeping the Prophet untapped can help against the Wandering Emperor. And then this can provide a bit of card advantage. They'll be tempted to take it out. And then we still have our Reconstruction. So having Triple Relic actually worked out against the Sweeper here. Better than having more creatures in play. It's gonna be Elspeth of Resplendent next. It's gonna minus three. This is my city, and I'm going Finding to ambitious farmhands, so not too bad. And our opponent could also have farewell next turn to exile all our artifacts, which would not be too pleasant. So maybe I should just try and combo off as much as possible while I can. Can play Sten, name Sorcery, cast a big reconstruction. And then take it from there, basically. So X equals, if I play the land, could also wait to play the land in case we hit Pia, so I can make a Thopter to try and finish off Elspeth. So right now it would be X equals 5, thanks to the discount, and then still have a land drop left. I think that's reasonable. Did find Pia. No mirror box, so getting a second profit doesn't do much for me. I guess if I grab another profit, it's gonna be untapped, which might help against the Wandering Emperor. Sure. And then it can also make more mana with the Relic, although I don't think that's gonna be super relevant. So we do get our Thopter. Uh, there's a Skrelf incoming. That doesn't do much for me. 
I do want to reconfigure reality chip so it doesn't get swept up by a regular sweeper at least. I won't let you harm innocent bystanders. Uh, let's put it on Pia. Tap reality chip itself. And then we still have three mana available to use Ten's ability. And hope there's no sweeper here. Tukasia's welcome is acceptable. Alright, if we get to keep our board next turn, we should be able to do some damage with Pia and Prophet. Just need to find Unctus to combine with Rona to really go off. Could still see land plus sweeper, which would hurt. Disenchant Skrelf, that's acceptable. I guess I'll make some mana here just in case. We have another Skrelf coming up. Take our turn. Okay. So the objective is to try and find a mirror box as soon as possible. I can play the land off the top even though it will be tapped just to get rid of it. I guess we may as well draw and discard. Does mean discarding the planes, so maybe I should just play the planes since it's untapped. While there's no downside. Find another Pia. Just missing our mirror box, and with a reconstruction we've got a good chance of finding one. So play Skrelf first, since that can immediately tap for mana. Opponent with a virtue and response, that's fine. Draws another card. So, definitely want to tap Rona here. And then, let's do X equals 5. Can tap Skrelv as well. More than 5 is probably overkill. Did find Mirror Box, awesome. So I think we're good to go now. I want to play Pia as soon as possible. Keep tapping Rona for mana. Since we can keep on tapping it, play another Rona. So now we basically have two mana per legend for free. And we should be able to make a lethal army of Thopters now. Find another Rona, and there's one on top, so yeah. We've got all the mana in the world, so we can pretty much play our entire deck now. Just want to make sure I don't time out. And there's a lot of triggers happening, so... Just want to speed up as much as possible. Something like this. Play another Rona. Stamp this for colored mana. And then play another Prophet, sure. Don't think mana's gonna be a bottleneck here, so. Cast another reconstruction. Don't have many cards left. Find a Pia. Play another Pia. And we already seem to have a lethal army of Thopters here. Just want to make absolutely sure. Okay. And then attack all. Uh, 
and even though we've got an empty library because our cards get exiled with the Prophet's ability, we don't actually lose the game. So good to show that interaction as well. So yeah, that's our whole deck in exile pretty much, or in play. Just needed to dodge a sweeper for one turn and we did. So yeah, that's how much flying damage here, 60, plus some more on the ground. And if we weren't about to time out, I probably could have cast a few more spells to make more Thopters, but there's no need. Usually the priority is just get Rona and Pia in play as soon as possible, since those can generate the Thopters and generate more mana. And then it's just try and play as much as possible before you time out. Awesome, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play with a promising hand. Turn one, Skralf, turn two, Pia. Relic will then make a lot of mana for reconstruction. But we'll have to take a little bit of damage off our pain land. Can't quite play stun on turn two. And Skralf can protect Pia. So it could be up against a multicolor domain strategy, which could have some sweepers, which I'm not looking forward to. So go with Relic. And then could play Stan naming artifacts. And then still play Mirror Box. Sure. And then next turn go for a big reconstruction. Stomper for ramp. So next turn it could technically sunfall me already. Well, just gonna cast this reconstruction while we can. And then x equals 4 is probably enough. Okay, find Unctus times two, and then Prophet. So yeah, we should be able to do some damage. Double Skrelv, or we can Relic, so it's not quite as bad against Sunfall. Um, sure. So we can tap for mana. Which will exile quite a few cards. Okay, make sure we play Pia as soon as possible, although I actually want to Rona first, since that can then generate more mana for us. Yeah, I want to make sure we can combo quickly. Oh yes, double Pia. I'm pretty sure we have a lethal here. As long as I don't mess this up. Play another Pia. Play Overseer, perhaps, or we can play Reality Chip, since that essentially makes extra mana for us if we uh, tap Rona. Another Pia. I guess we'll start there. And then play Reality Chip. All right, but I think we already have lethal here. But we could keep going if we wanted to, probably play most of our deck, but we already have plenty of Thopters that can attack. Not bad. What turn is this? Turn four. That's impressive. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Our hand's a little slow to get going without any early plays, but uh, yeah, Relic plus some... Uh, Three mana artifacts. Could potentially make a second token if we time it correctly. And a mirror box is next. Okay. So next turn. Not quite sure what I want to lead with. 
Could go with a mirror box first, so we don't expose a creature to removal. Although if I have a creature in play, it's going to be easier to potentially put three artifacts in play next turn. Since we'll have four lands with a creature and a relic, we still essentially have three mana. I guess we'll still be a little bit short. So, yeah, maybe just play the Overseer here. And then I'm fine trading the token for Trespasser. Also better against a potential Liliana. And then the creature can still make extra mana alongside Relic next turn. Yeah, there's Liliana. It's actually interesting what I decide to keep here. Maybe I actually keep the Overseer. And then they can't attack with Trespasser, otherwise we finish off Liliana. And this will help me dump out my hand. So we can play Relic, and then we could play Mirror Box, or we can go Relic plus Runa. So next turn I can draw and discard a bunch, although Runa would still be susceptible to some of the cheaper removal spells, whereas with Mirror Box it can potentially survive them. So let's try this. And go with Mirror Box. And then next turn Unctus plus Rona should be pretty good. Shield Roots, okay, that can punish the card draw from Rona and Unctus pretty hard. So not what we wanted to see. So finding a profit to exile our cards instead of drawing would actually help. Pia's next. Okay, so I can just empty my hand if I'd like. And then if Liliana minuses, probably just get rid of the Overseer. And then I'll tamp this first so we don't draw and discard. Okay. And then just play I Ganjo, I suppose. Since it's gonna be discarded either way. There might have been a sequence where I can keep a Plaza of Heroes to protect one of my key creatures. So Overseer down. If we're in a position where we're making a lot of artifacts to uh, enable the Overseer, that implies that we're going off with Pia, so then it's not really that big of a deal. Shieldred is attacking. Triple block seems rough, double block can be bad in the face of go for the throat. So I'll just take it. Okay, I get to draw. Find another relic. Well, could start looting, could transform Rona. Have a few options. If I transform Rona, it kind of turns into a stalemate where we hope they can't take it out. This we can only use as a sorcery, so it's not like I can make my creature into an artifact at instant speed to play around go for the throat. But we do have a plaza of heroes I could potentially use. So maybe that's the plan. It would also switch to night time, which is not ideal. But uh, yeah, I guess we could transform Arona here. Three, four, five. Can pay the two life. Or we can tap a creature. And then still keep up Plaza. But only if we actually have enough creatures on tap. So I think that means I'll have to pay the life. Alright. Let's go for it. And then pass a turn. Although now if I want to use Plaza of Heroes, I think we're just dead on board since our opponent can attack all out. So maybe there wasn't really a point in doing that. Could have saved myself two damage. 
which could certainly matter with Shieldred draining us. Although the upside now is that if Shieldred attacks, I can block and make indestructible, which the opponent may not play around. All right, let's give it a shot. Still gonna end up losing a bunch of life here to Unctus' ability. All right, found our profit, so that's what we needed. So it could even beat a backup Shieldred, but we actually get to steal the opponent's Shieldred and cast it. Awesome, and make a Thopter. That was quite the turning point. But now we should be able to just combo off. Although now that we control the opponent's Shieldred, we actually want to draw and discard as opposed to exiling with a profit. But uh, yeah, our opponent explodes. Now with Shieldred on our side, it's going to be pretty easy to cross the finish line. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Missing red mana for Pia. No Relic of Legends to set up a big reconstruction. But it still seems keepable. Skrelvin to Sten. Against the red aggro. Not loving my chances. Don't have the best blockers early on. Okay, now that we have our profit, we're just a red mana away from potentially doing something. Alright, let's go for Pia. And hope they don't have a monstrous rage. Double prowess on Swiss Spear would also be bad. Can be an impulse to start out. Finding Epicure and Warfare. Alright, so for now we can actually block a Swiss Spear. Take three. And there's our relic. Okay. So, gotta make some decisions. Could play Relic now, and then still play our Partisan. Or we can just play Prophets, and then next turn exile the top two cards, and start making Thopters. I think I prefer that. Also puts another large blocker into play. Opponent stuck on two lanes, it seems. Goes for Epic here. They could still have a Monstrous Rage in hand that they simply couldn't cast last turn since they didn't hit a third land. Opponent goes digging. And yeah, looks like we successfully held off an attack. Just a Phoenix check getting in for one. Okay. A land is good. So, play Relic. Play Seacrum Coast. Could play Replacement Skrelv just to make another Thopter, although means Skrelv won't be active, since I can just tap it for mana here. Could also play Sten. I think I will actually play another Skrelv, because I want to play Sten. And this way I get to make an extra Thopter while keeping Pia and Prophet back on defense. And this can name Sorcery. And then next turn we'll go for a large reconstruction. Could cast one for X equals one right now, but that doesn't seem all that exciting. Could even flicker the Partisan with its ability. But this is their window to maybe take out one of our key creatures while we don't have the protection from Skrelv. Triple Swiss Spear is quite scary. Kumano to trigger Prowess. And an all-out attack. Okay, just gonna line up some blocks here. Could also channel I Ganjo actually, which is probably better than flickering Sten. So we can maybe bait out a trick. Something like this. Could block the unblocked Swiss Spear just to soak up some damage. And then we might see a trick 
on uh, Pia blocking or on the Prophet. And then we can intervene with Igenjo. And they're just going to play with Fire Sten. So, could Flicker Sten, but I think it's more important to rescue Pia. So we'll channel on Swiss Spear. Yeah, if we had one more mana, I would have had enough to Flicker Sten. But yeah, we should have enough mana to set up a powerful reconstruction. Play Runa first, so that can immediately tap for mana. And then, if we maybe find a mirror box, I can still play another PI afterwards. So, reconstruction x equals can make it 4. Sure. There is definitely a fail rate here where I don't find anything and just die next turn, but it seems worth it. Okay, found Mirror Box and another Pia. So I can play Pia from Exile, make two Thopters. Untap Runa. And yeah, now we're in business. Still probably gonna hang back with the Thopters, but next turn I imagine we can uh, try and close out the game. Well, games against Monored Aggro can sometimes end on turn 3 or 4, if they have a good start. They struggled a little bit to hit their land drops, so we were lucky enough to get to this point. But certainly a matchup that favors Monorad aggro, so I don't expect to win it very often. Our deck just doesn't have a lot of cheap interaction to keep up. The Lightning Strike goes face. We're at 6. And play with Fire puts us to 4. Big difference between 3 and 4 life against Red. They don't have any good attacks. And our opponent explodes, alright, I'll take it. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play with a hand that's missing red mana for Pia, although any third lands we get to play Relic, and we're off to the races. So I'll keep. Just a bunch of cheap legendaries, plus Relic, plus Reconstruction is all we need. Although cut down points towards more removal in the future as well. So it might be tricky to keep enough creatures in play for Relic to be effective. Opponent black green, virtue killing Rona. Alright, not off to the start I was hoping for. Can play Unctus, can play a Relic. If we still had Rona, could have gone Relic plus Pia. Now... I guess... Um, Uncta survives most of their removal, doesn't die to cut down, doesn't die to virtue. It's an artifact, doesn't die to go for the throat. Just hoping they don't have a Liliana. It's gonna be a Glissa instead, also pretty good. Okay, we've got our Prophet plus Pia, so that's the combo. For now, go Relic plus Pia. And then, yeah, hopefully we get to do some damage next turn. Pia, a lot more likely to die to opposing removal here. It's gonna be a tortoise for ramp, so they can eventually cast a virtue. And this I could also destroy some of our artifacts. And another relic. Okay, so the goal here is to maybe first cast a reconstruction, can cast one for x equals 3, and then next turn play profits, and then with Unctus we should be able to keep going. If we find three legends we can still play relic afterwards. Okay. Mirror box, another Pia, and Prophet is an option, or we can double up on Unctus. There's still maybe a little bit of concern if they blow up my mirror box, but we'll have double one legend either way. So I guess we'll go with um, double Pia. And then for now we can pass, even though I can tap Erith. 
and then essentially use Unctus's ability to exile a few cards. Let's just wait and see what happens. And then next turn we should be able to combo off, potentially present lethal. Just Glissa attacking, we'll take it. But is looking at our mirror box. Just a graveyard trespasser, that's acceptable. Times two. Okay, so should be able to do some damage here. Exile two cards, play a land, which will trigger double Pia. Can play a relic. And then start tapping for mana. Just a couple of lanes here. I guess I should play my creature before I have to discard it. And then we can tap this for mana as well. Find a reconstruction. Okay, so how much mana do we have here? Three, four, five. So X equals two. That looks good. Could also play stun first and then cast it for X equals one which would generate more Thopters. Yeah, I guess that's fine. And actually, never mind, Sten is mana neutral since it can tap with Relic and can name Sorcery. So definitely should uh, play Sten first and then cast this for X equals two because we have four creatures that can tap for mana plus a discount. So yeah, X equals two, find more Legends, make two more Thopters. And uh, yeah, that's just too much for the mid-range deck to handle. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Our hand is probably keepable. Stun naming sorcery to set up a big reconstruction. Just need a third white source. And then overseer on three in the meantime. Up against white aggro. Okay, could play turn one Skrelv. And then next turn I have to decide if I want to hang on to Soaring City as a channel land. Thalia is going to make our reconstruction a bit more expensive. There's our third white source. Yeah, I don't think we're going to end up channeling Soaring City anytime soon. So we're going to have to take another four damage at least. Next turn our token can hold off their attackers hopefully. And Skrelf can protect from a potential Brutal Cathar. Veteran to pump the team is not what we wanted to see. So I probably have to trade for Officer now. Otherwise we're just going to be too far behind. Or I can trade for the token next turn. And then keep stun for the discount, which is also pretty key. Alright, let's take six. Not happy about it. Another veteran, okay. So if they attack all out, probably trade for the first veteran. Just Thalia attacking. Still in pretty rough shape here. Relic of Legends, probably one of our better draws to be fair. So next turn we can set up a big reconstruction if we're not dead yet. So hopefully we get another turn. Another veteran to pump the team, and then probably gonna see an all out attack. And I've got three blockers, they're all chum blocks. So it's not gonna be pretty. Yeah, that's too bad. Just needed one more actual blocker to maybe discourage an attack. I guess we can actually flicker stun. 
So that will come back. We're at four. Name sorcery, but I'm not sh sure that reconstruction is going to be good enough to save me. So we've got five lanes, six, seven, eight. Thalia and Stan cancel each other out, so X equals five is the most we can do. And yeah, we hit five things, including mirror box. Although I think we're still dead here. Relic on top, I've got three blockers. While I can reconfigure reality chip, it doesn't really lead anywhere. So yeah, we still seem dead here. But yeah, that was a nice Kaelas reconstruction. If we had one more turn, then we probably could have uh, done some damage here with our profit finding more cards. Just needed something like an Unctus or Rona to start exiling more cards. Could technically have a channel land in hand, which could mess up their attacks. But if they go for it, we're dead. Our opponent doesn't actually go for it. So now I can chump with probably the reality chip. Or do we chump with the profits? Maybe actually prefer keeping the reality chip. It's a tough call. I can flicker stun, so that's kind of a free block. Um but I still have to block a second creature. Reality Chip can play stuff off the top next turn. Profits, Exiles, Relic, plus another card. Yeah, I think Reality Chip gives us a better chance. Even though Profit would be awesome if we find Pia alongside it. That can name artifacts. I suppose a double block was also an option, and then our opponent gets to choose which creature to kill, but we actually take out Officer. But I think we gotta make the decision ourselves. So we'll name artifacts. And there's a P on top, so that would have been pretty great with our profit, but it's still gonna be good here with reality chip, so first wanna make mana. Before we reconfigure it. Reconfigure onto Skrelf, perhaps. Play Pia. A land, another relic. And another mirror box. Not quite what we needed. So... Yeah, I guess we just play the mirror box and then I doubt we'll be able to survive another turn. Can tap Pia or can tap Skrelv. If our opponent had a Brutal Cathar, we might have seen it by now. Can channel off the top with our uh, reality chip, unfortunately. So, yeah, I think we're at the end of the line now. Opponent can just attack with their flyer. And there's not much I can do about it. Well, still survived one more turn than I thought we would. Had we kept profits, then we could have played Pia and then played Relic from Exile, make a Thopter to block Officer. Although, opponent attacking with everyone probably still would have been game. All right, GG's. If we could actually channel Soaring City, we would have still gotten one more turn. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, and our hand seems pretty good. Skrelv to protect Runa. And then Unctus to draw a lot of cards. Obliterating Bolt deals with Skrelv. So Rona 
may follow suit here. It's going to be a rending flame, lots of heavy hitting burn spells. So I could play mirror box first, so Unctus can maybe survive some of these burn spells. Sure. Gonna be Mondrak next, so tokens deck. Okay, go with Unctus. And then next turn we could grow both of them thanks to Mirror Box. Another rending flame here. Still within range. Well, this is an unusual matchup. So if I play another Unctus. We can keep up my Gancho here to maybe take out Mondrak. Although they don't really have a reason to attack unless they remove Unctus. Can maybe block and bait out a trick. Wandering Emperor, perfect. So let them place a plus one counter and then we can I Gancho. Nice, we've got Pia plus or Profit now. Can't quite play both. So let's go with Profit first then. Anctus attacks Emperor. And then next turn we get to start comboing. Hopefully find something like a Relic of Legends to fix our colors a little bit, give us more mana. Destroy evil. Okay, profit down. Yeah, Poon's pretty good at killing large creatures. Reconstruction isn't bad. Can cast one for X equals two here. Yeah, let's go for it. Find Relic plus Rona. And then I could still play Pia. And then Rona will make us draw and discard with Unctus, sadly without Profit in play to keep going. Okay, and attack for three. And then next turn we'll see a lot of cards, hopefully find another Profit to truly combo off. Just a line for the opponents. Okay, so step one, probably activate Runa, which will let us draw and discard twice. Okay, maybe keep the plaza to protect from removal. So now what I could turn Pia into a blue creature, tap it, so that can also draw and discard. Could also just transform Rona here. Got a few options. Could also just start attacking with uh, Pia, which will also let us loot. Sure. Okay. Overseer is good. And then we have one, two, three, four mana, so not quite enough to transform. And since we're empty handed, no real point in activating Rona, so I'll pass. And then we might have lethal next turn with a transformed Rona, and that does it. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Our hand seems keepable. Turn one can play Skralv, turn two. Maybe Rona, if we think it'll survive against Mono White. Turn to Thalia, we don't mind. Okay, let's go with Rona then. And I'll hang on to Iganjo. Skralv can protect Rona. And then with Unctus, we'll get to cycle through the deck pretty quickly. Take three. Good to hang on to Iganjo, although with the ward, it's going to be a bit pricey to uh, answer their creature. So probably start with the Runa activation. 
Hoping to find another blue source. There we go. Arona can go. And then... Yeah, I think we play Unctus here. Could also go Sten. But then I guess I won't be able to play Chip afterwards. So yeah, let's go with Unctus. And then now tapping Rona will let us draw in this card twice. We also have a good blocker for Thalia. Hopeful Initiate could potentially destroy some of our artifacts. Times two. Okay. So we're looking for maybe a Relic of Legends. There we go. And then a Chaos Reconstruction at some point. Don't think we need Sten as much. Even though it can name Artifact and let me dump out my hand. We still need to have something to kind of top off our curve. And Relic of Legends already will generate quite a bit of mana for us. One land can go. Okay, so... Play Relic, which will cost 4 mana. And then we can play Reality Chip. Tapping Rona. Four mana here. And then we'll still have the uh, channel for my Ganjo available thanks to Relic making mana. Okay, pass it back. And then next turn we can look into reconfiguring the reality chip as well. Spellbook Vendor can maybe help grow some of their creatures. But they don't have the best of attacks. Okay, so we'll just activate Rona. Draw and discard. Another Rona incoming. That can go. And then PS next, so that one will want to keep. So I could just tap Reality Chip here using Relic to draw and discard again. And there's our Prophet. Perfect. Okay, take our turn. So how do we want to sequence here? Let's say we play Pia. Then play Prophet. If I play Prophet first and then Pia... There's a chance we actually end up discarding Pia to all the Unctus abilities here. So yeah, let's go with Pia first, just to be safe. And then Rona can activate to get rid of the mountain of the top here. And another Skrelf can go as well. Okay, there's a, another Pia, which will be helpful once we find a uh, copy of Mirror Box. For now, if I play the Prophets, we can still activate Rona. And then, yeah, we'll draw and discard twice. Okay, so now if I were to activate Rona, we exile the top two cards, and I have to discard Iganjo as a problem. So I think I just pass. Don't think I even bother reconfiguring a reality chip, because then I'll have to tap a bunch of blue creatures. So let's just pass a turn. Can channel for one mana, so I could potentially not tap any blue creatures by tapping Pia and or Skrelv. And our opponent does start attacking. So the priority should be to take out the Hopeful Initiates. Opponent could have their own copy of Iganjo, of course. So... Yeah, this attack only really makes sense if they have something like Iganjo, I think. So we can't use Skrelv to protect from an opposing Iganjo. Maybe what I should have done is channel Iganjo on Thalia before blockers so that they couldn't get the discount from their Iganjo. 
Yeah, that might have been the play, and then I could have double blocked, hopeful initiate safely. I think I still go for this. And this. And then... I guess we'll um, just go to damage for now and see what our opponent does. Because for now we can let damage happen. Okay. And uh, officer is next. Might have also wanted to put a stop after combat damage, but before second main phase, so we can still channel a gun on the hopeful initiate. But it's fine to have an extra card to potentially play next turn, so we'll just take our turn. Those are exiles. Okay, and now we get to party started here. So play the coasts. If I tap reality chip, I will end up discarding Iganjo. But I don't think we're getting an attack in either. Or I can just pass a turn here instead of going off. But I think we've got all the pieces in play that we can just combo off right now. Soul Time Priority Chip. Relic of Legends on top. Could reconfigure this onto, let's say, Unctus. And then keep it going. Reconstruction on top, perfect. So let's cast one for x equals, let's say, 3. Triple Pia. And then play Reality Chip. Which will make multiple Thopters. Play another Unctus. Finding another Rona could help us string together more spells, but I think we're doing all right as is. Right, there's another Rona, so can play that. So it was a bit messy here in the end for this last turn as we actually skipped to our second main phase because we timed out so we weren't actually able to attack. But yeah, assuming we have enough time, we can easily assemble a lethal army of Thopters, already have 21 damage in the air. And uh, yeah, maybe last turn should have channeled Igunjo, but either way, good to showcase the power of the deck nicely. Alright, so we get to see our Jeskai Legends combo in action, and I'm very impressed by the deck's performance, capable of killing on turn 4 with a good draw, so it's potentially fast enough to keep up with the aggressive decks and the format, but it can also play kind of a mid-range fair game, where it just tries to get a bit of value out of the Chaos Reconstruction, Profit Exiling cards, we can play off the top with the Reality Chip, so it does have some tools to play a longer game as well, which is great, but it also has that explosiveness with Relic of Legends alongside all our cheap legendaries, to then potentially set up an early kill, so that's awesome. And then having that combo finish with Pia and Prophet is also quite nice, so we don't need to wait for the opponent to untap and potentially cast a sweeper, we can just end the game on the spot. And then with all the card draw between Rona and Unctus, there's a lot of redundancy and consistency to find those missing combo pieces. So yeah, all in all, very impressed by the deck. It's not the easiest to play, there's quite a few decisions, but that's what makes it fun for me, since you've got so many different lines of play, you have to constantly decide what to draw and discard, which could creatures to activate, how to sequence your spells, especially with an Unctus in play, becomes pretty tricky. So yeah, overall, can't say enough good things about the deck. So that'll do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.